What's up crows, it's Aaron here and today we're going to be talking about Heroku. So a few days ago, Heroku, a subsidiary of Salesforce, they bought them a few years ago. I think it was like 2011 or something like that. But basically they bought them for a couple hundred million dollars. It's a platform as a service that specializes in helping people with DevOps. So like I use it for deploying Postgres servers and doing tutorials and things like that. But a few days ago, they announced that they're gonna be eliminating all of their free tiers. So there's not gonna be any free tiers available on Heroku in the future. And everyone that's on the free tier right now is not gonna be able to continue on the free tier without upgrading to a paid plan. This news was pretty shocking to the developer community because for over 10 years, Heroku free tiers have been a staple in teaching people how to code and getting people into software development without having a lot of money. Like the amount of tutorials that are just gonna be completely useless now, or at least a lot harder to follow, is gonna be absurd to say the least. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about why Heroku decided to do this and some of the free alternatives you can use, or at least some of the free tiers you can use to replace Heroku. But before that, I'm going to ask you to please, please, please leave a like on this video. It's really, really helpful to the YouTube algorithm, and I really appreciate it. Now let's get into the video. The main reason Heroku cited for this change was that people have been abusing the free tier for fraudulent activities. Not only are they abusing the free tier, but Heroku has to additionally pay a ton of money into helping prevent and track down people who are abusing the free tier. Now, what does this look like? A couple of the things people use Heroku for in terms of fraudulent activities are going to be crypto mining and setting up phishing sites. Now crypto mining is kind of self-explanatory, it's just a way to turn Heroku's computing resources in terms of GPU and CPU into revenue, which is essentially you set up a service that mines crypto on Heroku services using the free tier. If you can string along a bunch of these, then you might be able to make a little bit of money. It's not going to be much because the resources aren't like that intensive when you're on the free tier, but people still do because some money is better than no money, I guess. While crypto mining is kind of an obvious fraudulent activity that doesn't need a lot of explanation, what is setting up a phishing site and how is it Heroku's problem? A phishing site is one that's made to look like the homepage of Netflix or Coinbase. And as soon as you put in your credentials, it sends it over to whoever the bad actor is and they're able to steal either your account or maybe your funds in your account if it's Coinbase or maybe they just wanna give your Netflix password to a bunch of people or watch Netflix for free. I know this happened to me with Spotify. I wasn't fished, but people kept getting a hold of my account password and using it for just listening to music that I knew I wasn't listening to. And the funny story about that is that I was actually sharing my account with a friend and I was like, dude, why, why do you listen to so much Mexican music? Like, I didn't know you were into this kind of music. And he was like, wait, I thought that was you the whole time. And Basically, I changed the password to a much more complex one, but that's just kind of an idea of what people can do when they're getting a hold of your account for something like Netflix. Now, while many phishing attacks target older or less technically inclined people, they can really affect anyone. You know, if you're really tired late at night browsing the web or something like that, you're not going to be in the right mind state to detect a phishing site sometimes. Uh, they can have really, really convincing ones or convincing emails. So everybody's gotta just stay alert and change your passwords often. It's the best way to prevent them. Now getting back to Heroku, why is it their problem? A bunch of people were setting up these phishing sites for free because Heroku has a generous free tier and they were able to do a bunch of iteration and testing to see which ones work better than others and things like that. And so people would use their services for these nefarious activities and so Heroku had to try to find a way to stop them. And that looked like spending a lot of money on anti-fraud and anti-abuse teams and engineers they were able to track down people like this using different criteria and it turns into a lot of money being spent to maintain something that's already a cost center because it's free and at the end of the day Heroku is a business that's trying to earn money and so what they did to try to combat this is now they're just canceling all of the free tiers to try to eliminate this. I'll leave a document linked in the description if you're interested in these anti-abuse teams and the technologies that go behind finding these fraudsters if you're interested. So now that we know why Heroku eliminated their free tier, let's get into some of the alternatives. So there's some huge companies like Google, Amazon, and Microsoft that have cloud service providers that have really generous free tiers. And the ones people seem to like the most out of these three are gonna be AWS, Google App Engine, and Google's Firebase. Now, when I was just getting into coding, I used Google's Firebase, and I gotta say, it was insanely good. I really liked the developer experience, their documentation was amazing for somebody just getting into coding. 
and I use them for things like authentication, storage, and their NoSQL database, Firestore. Now, moving on, AWS and Netlify have awesome free tiers, but more than that, the tutorials and documentation behind these two are insanely good. When I say insanely good, I mean that I have literally searched up deploy a Next.js site on Netlify, and within 10 minutes, I kid you not, 10 minutes I had a site deployed without putting in any payment, any credit card, or anything like that. I've also driven about a thousand or so visitors to a site that was on Netlify and it held up perfectly well. I haven't been charged at all yet. I don't even think I've reached half the capacity for the free tier. And so that's just to give you an idea of what the free tier looks like on Netlify. I really like Netlify. I plan on making more tutorials on them in the future. So I highly recommend them to anybody that's looking for a free tier of a hosting solution or anything like that. So finally, I wanted to mention two startups I found that are working on platforms as a service to handle DevOps and infrastructure for different people. And those two are gonna be Porter and Railway. So these two are startups, like I said, and they're working on helping people go from Heroku to a more scalable solution. Uh, they're gonna be doing more custom solution type things. And if you wanna check them out, startups definitely have more room to grow in terms of features and they don't really get pigeonholed into being really rigid in what they offer. Kind of like something like Heroku is gonna be more rigid because it's owned by Salesforce, it's already been purchased, so they're gonna try to just keep doing what they're doing if it's working in terms of revenue. Startups are sometimes better to support and I like supporting startups and open source more because you can really have, your opinion can really have a change on what's happening on the dev team. And with that, we're gonna wrap up today's video. If you guys enjoyed this, please, please, please leave a like and subscribe. I hope this video was helpful and I hope you're all not too affected by this Heroku chain. I'll probably be making more tutorials with Netlify and AWS in the future. So if you're interested in that, definitely check out some of my other videos. And thank you all for watching. Later, Crows.